Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Silver falls below $20 an ounce, breaking through its floor into the upside down. Let's explore. <laughs> Yes, indeed. In an alternative universe, silver prices have plunged now below what was seemingly thought to be its floor, a solid resistance. I didn't think this would happen. It's still relatively close to $20 an ounce in the ask price, but nonetheless, it is down solidly below that $20 an ounce level. Gold, for a brief amount of time, did fall below $1,800 but then did recover a little above that. So where does that leave the gold and silver ratio now? It is getting dangerously close now to 100 to one, something we saw the last time this happened. Yes, indeed, into that alternative universe that many people think should not exist in cases like this when you have inflation and when you have other things going on. But we very well could be uh, very close to a panic of recession. And seemingly that would think that people would go the other way around and accumulate more silver uh, to protect themselves. But alas, that is not the case. And that's what this video is about. We're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna be partially referencing a video from, or an article here from Market Watch that talks about this, the movement of gold and silver today, pretty big drop. And it comes gold shed almost 2% of its value during the month of June. And we saw some price action uh, for sure for both metals to the downside. Commodities continue to weaken and recession fears batter the markets. Several commodity analysts said that the technical action in the gold market suggests that the middle, that the metal will continue to slide. That seems to be the case. The common thread here, which a lot of analysts are saying now, that uh, silver and gold will continue to fall. Many of them were saying that they would rise by the end of the year. Now these are turning in the other direction. Gold has managed to get support from buyers uh, just below $1,800 uh, for the last six months, but this time buyers may come to the rescue much later, as said according to Alex Kopuchevich, senior market analyst at FX Pro. The latest financial market dynamics, falling equity prices and yields suggest the markets are banking on a recession, he said in an email commentary. Now I'm gonna explain just how that works and why that leaves the precious metals down, especially silver. Data Friday show that the ISM barometer of American factories fell 3.1 points to a two year low of 53% in June and another sign that the U.S. economy is slowing. Meanwhile, central banks are only picking up speed and tightening monetary policy, creating pressure on long-term inflation expectations. In such an environment, demand for gold as insurance against inflation promises to decline in the coming weeks. Fascinating to think about that. It goes against everything we thought. It is upside down, this world is. On the industrial metal side, a team of analysts at Commerce Bank said the easing of China's COVID-19 restrictions had failed to bolster demand for copper, which is trading at its weakest level in 17 months, as fears of slowing global growth continues to weigh on industrial commodities. Silver has fallen even more sharply than gold because of its characteristics of both a precious metal and as an industrial metal. The excess decline in the price of silver has sent the ratio of gold to silver prices to its highest level in two years. In fact, that two-year level, we saw it rise well above 100. It was about 126. You want to talk about upside down, especially with silver compared to gold. It was it. That was it for sure. Besides the falling gold price, silver is being additionally depressed by the weak, very weak base metal prices. This is because silver is not only an investment metal uh, or a hedge, really, like how I like to think of it, but to an equal extent, and even not more so, an industrial metal. An industrial metal 
um, demand for all industrial metals is declining as we are seemingly headed to a recession. It's all but official at this point, I believe. And I think it's just a matter of time before we get that news. And it likely the Federal Reserve may not be swayed by it too much and may continue to tighten a bit. Uh, but it's not going to only do but so much of that to try to find that balance to prevent uh, a deeper recession. And that's just it, folks, is that where do you draw the line and how long can this last? But gold and silver provide an opportunity at this point where they have been and other times during economic uncertainty. Uh, where do people run to first whenever there is an economic uncertainty and decline? The dollar and the dollar strength is up. Uh, high dollar uh, strength compared to other currencies, even though it is inflated, is still where people will go. And especially people that really have no clue about precious metals, they really don't know. Um, and so therefore, they may see silver and gold prices and think, well, that's not where I want to be because their prices are going down. They're not acting as inflation hedges, especially silver. Why would I even mess with that? And that would be a very good question for those who aren't in the know um, or don't have a, a longer span um, or outlook of where the precious metals have performed in the past and what we know they will do in the future in a general sense. So right now we are seeing what uh, many of us think is this alternative dimension existing in a parallel with the with the economic world that we know today. Uh, and so we have a lot of the same things that are in link together uh, in this sort of a hive mind mentality controlled by the mind flayer. Yes, indeed. What is that mind flayer? What is the analogy there? Well, some people feel like that it could be price suppression or manipulation by the big banks that keep the price of silver down. But does it really exist? I don't know. Uh, essentially, it forms an enormous super organism that controls everything in the, in the markets and the, and the precious metal markets. And that organism leads to things like spoofing and other illegal activity or uh, unethical activity to keep the prices of silver, especially silver down. And the COMEX, maybe pe people feel like COMEX is the mind flayer. And so a key component of this hive mind uh, was essentially a species of these humanoid predators. Those are individuals who essentially engage in this activity within some of the central banks on the precious metals trading desk of those banks. And those are the demogorgons of the precious metals fear that work to uh, work against silver and gold. And seemingly, some people feel like that they may be controlled by this mind flayer in order to get people to be disillusioned by these precious metals. So they give up on them. I would encourage you not to do that because really there's no evidence of a huge conspiracy to keep the precious metal prices down, uh, although we know that they are uh, controlled or they are controlled by the government and by the uh, central bankers. So in a sense, those could be the mind flayer or the over policy makers or where they are going, or where they are, where we are headed in the future. And we know where that uh, is leading to us with the technology behind it. And that is some sort of a, a digital based um, ledger system controlled by central bankers and governments and globalist institutions known as environmental, social and governance. And those are going to be the things that really we should be fearful of rather than a conspiracy to keep the price of precious metals down for a, a, a lengthy period of time. But nonetheless, this is where we come together, folks, and we realize that, hey, we're going to see these movements in prices. And even though it seems like we're on the upside down right now, we know that in the long run, silver will shine, not necessarily shining bright as, a, as something that's going to make us rich, um, if, especially if we feel it's so undervalued today, but rather something that is set up to preserve our wealth over the long course of time. And so it's not about greed and hoping to get rich off of silver and being disillusioned there, but it's about wealth preservation, patience, persistence, perseverance through these. Those are the three Ps in order to think about 
where we go with silver into the future. And specifically silver, because gold does not seem to be affected quite as much uh, in this scenario um, that we're seeing uh, silver being hit hard. With the gold to silver rising at a dramatic rate, the gold to silver ratio rising at a dramatic rate now. And with merely last week when it was in the mid 80s, <clears throat> now it is above 90, 91. Uh, is the gold to silver ratio as I record this video. And that is something that is certainly frustrating. It's got to be frustrating to a lot of people, but realize, understand, silver is unique and that it is does have a dual, serves a dual role, and it is getting hit on both sides of that role, which means that it's going to get smacked down harder based off of these natural market forces, fear of a recession, which means it's going to be there's going to be less industrial demand that's going to pull that price down more and more. And so what does this mean for you? What does this mean for my recent purchases? Well, I had thought when I made my big purchases because of the premiums falling and for these big two kilo bars that I bought and the silver spot price uh, well over a dollar than what it is now, I thought that was the low. So I lost out on that purchase, but I know that uh, in the course of time, it will come together and I will preserve my wealth. As long as I don't sell that silver right now, I'm not going to take a loss. So you just got to be patient through these times. Does this provide a good opportunity to buy? It sure does. Should you buy during this time? That depends on your personal financial situation. You should never be pressured to buy silver um, outside of your uh comfort zone in terms of your finances and in terms of, of, of where things are. But as the price goes lower and as the premiums seem to be dipping uh, and when silver is unloved, that is the time to buy. That's utilizing smart dollar cost averaging. And I encourage you to engage in that uh, whenever you can based off of your financial situation, your budget and what you uh, feel comfortable doing. Uh, does silver preserve your wealth? Yes, it does but you have to play your cards right. And I would encourage you just to not play cards at all. Just do your finances, have a budget, understand what your limitations are financially, and you will do just fine. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Hope you found this video insightful, entertaining, and informative. And I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate share, comment, and subscribe.